So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Pete Forsyth, and along with Ben Creasy and Wayne Calhoun over here, uh, we started up this series uh, in April. So now is, what is this, our fourth, fifth? This is our fifth? Um, so thanks very much for coming. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to be leaving the Bay Area and moving back up to Portland. So this is my last for a little while, and it's really gratifying to see how many people are showing up and how much uh, independent, interesting discussion about wikis is, uh, is happening. Um, so with the, with the Wiki Salon series, what we really wanted to do was create a space for people to uh, talk and, uh, and exchange ideas, whether they're talking about projects that they're working on related to wikis or Wikipedia or any wiki site, um, to learn something new, to share uh, ideas that they have, to build projects together. Uh, and so we do like to have speakers and panel discussions and things like that, but we also wanted to really be sure to have a lot of space for people to uh, work together and, and talk on their own. So it feels like that's really happening well. I think next month will be one of the, basically every other month, we try to have one that does not have a, a scheduled program. Uh, and so next month will be one of those. So if you feel like there wasn't enough time here to, to talk or work on wikis at the event, next month should be more your speed for that. Um, I guess on a, on a personal note, I really wanted to say uh, this has been a, a very gratifying experience and I've made some, uh, some really good friends just through people I'd encountered here and there in a, in a, in a, at events and on the wiki, but um, in various ways it's been just tremendously gratifying to work with Ben and Wayne and uh, Pax, who's been a, a regular contributor and a, and a panelist and photographer and, and just many of the people who have, uh, who have turned up to these. So that's all I've got by way of it. Oh, and there's the Wi-Fi password. Uh, if you need to get on Wi-Fi, I believe the password is one edit can make a difference with the numeral one at the beginning. And then I believe it's all just lowercase strung together for the rest of it. One edit can make a difference. Is that right? Yeah? OK. And uh, Ben, did you have something you want to add? Briefly. <laughs> Apparently, I need to get used to speaking with this mic because uh, I'll, Pete won't be around in the future to, to rely on. So. We could give Pete a round of applause because there's no way this would have ever happened. He's got a lot of experience with organizing events, apparently, so he like knows exactly how to how to do all this stuff. Um, I don't have too much else to say except that I really appreciate the people who came out to to spend time with us, and I, I just want to remind people of just how cool Wikipedia is, and and how much influence it has in the world. And uh, so I, I just hope to see people in the future, and, and hopefully at one of these editing sessions, you can hang out with me and, and try making an edit to the Wikipedia. And um, I'm also excited at the opportunity to partner with people who have interest in specific topics. So last month, we partnered with the basic income activists. Maybe in the future, we'll partner with some other group of volunteers who are interested in some topic, or non-volunteers. Um, and. Uh, that I think we can introduce Marta. So, uh, so one of the things that we discussed at the beginning was that even though most of our shared interest is in Wikipedia and the Wikimedia world, we really wanted to have an event that uh, that that covers wikis more broadly and online collaboration more broadly, and uh, and so, you know, our the the initial ideas that we had tended to be about Wikipedia, but. Uh, we were very fortunate that one of the early people who came along who wanted to share some ideas with us is our next speaker, Marta Belcher, who uh, her first foray into the world of, of wikis as a, uh, a Stan Stanford Law student, she ran for the, uh, the graduation speech, to give the graduation speech on the platform of creating a wiki so that everyone in the class could contribute to that speech rather than having her own point of view that she was gonna share and apparently had a bit of a contentious uh, election and, uh, and did win that and deliver the speech. Um, she, at the time, was an intern at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, and she had, done some, uh, she, she had done a paper on mass collaboration, so it was something that she had developed an interest in. And she's gone on to become an attorney at Robeson Gray, where she does IP litigation uh, with a focus on technology. So please join me in a round of applause for Marta Belcher. We're interested to hear what you did. Well, hi there. 
Uh, thank you all so much uh, for coming out. Thanks, Ben, Pete, and Wayne. And uh, thanks to everyone who's watching on the live stream, uh, which, let's be honest, is just my mom. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about my experience crowdsourcing my law school graduation speech. Um, I do have a PowerPoint. Uh, I had a professor in law school who liked to say, uh, power corrupts and PowerPoint corrupts absolutely. Um, so I took that to heart, but I couldn't resist in this particular case, primarily because I wanted to show you a blog post that the Professional Speech Writers Association did about the wiki speech after the speech was delivered. <laughs> um, so it says, behold the wiki speech. More than 90 Stanford law grads used a wiki to write and edit their student graduation speech. The result isn't as bad as you think. So I'll take it. <laughs> that was how I knew this was a successful venture. Uh, so let me go back and start at the beginning with how I got the idea. Um, so you know how every startup has this great origin story, like I was cutting paper one day and my hand cramped and I thought, let's put batteries in the scissors. Um, <laughs> so I'll be honest, I don't have a great Silicon Valley origin story for the wiki speech. Um, it was October 2014. I was getting ready to stand, graduate from Stanford Law School the following June, and I got an email saying that the student graduation speaker was going to be chosen by an election. And I started thinking about it, and I'll be honest, I don't like graduation ceremonies. Um, there's something I find deeply disturbing about anticlimactic moments. And I feel like graduation ceremonies are often kind of anticlimactic, uh, even for the graduates, because you're not really participating. Um, and I had been the student commencement speaker at my undergrad, and I had actually really enjoyed that, not just delivering it, um, but actually the writing process um, and reflecting on my time at the school. Um, and I've been fascinated with mass collaboration for a long time, and so something just clicked, and I thought, why don't we all just write the speech together in a wiki? Um, at the time, it kind of seemed obvious. Um, why has this not been done? We have the technology. Um, so I decided to enter the election for graduation speaker. And my platform was, if you elect me, uh, we will all write the speech together in a wiki. Uh, and I started talking to my classmates, one-on-one, -on -one, in groups, and pitching the idea. And um, believe it or not, it was actually really controversial, uh, both within Stanford Law School uh, and in the media that covered it. Um, you're all perhaps Wikipedians, so I don't have to sell wikis to you, uh, but a lot of people thought it was going to be a disaster, um, or they didn't really understand crowdsourcing. Um, so for example, this is from a blog that does legal news roundups. Uh, Stanford student's commencement speaker crowdsourced her speech. It was all going along fine until the three-minute segment where she just yelled Baba Booey over and over again. <laughs> Which isn't really that funny, um, but, but, that, but that's kind of like, that was sort of the, the general reaction when I would pitch this idea to people. Um, and, you know, a lot of my classmates had this concern, um, but there were others who were extremely excited about it, um, or at least felt like, well, like, let's give it a shot. Um, and so there's this legal blog called Above the Law, and someone laughed, yeah. <laughs> it's like the National Enquirer of the legal profession. Um, they're kind of like required to be super snarky, um, and they did this article about the election while the election was going on, and I was actually surprised. They liked it. Um, they liked the idea. Um, I mean, they were still super snarky. <laughs> Uh, so here's, here's an excerpt from the article, um, the snarky part, they, you know, they said it was brilliant, so they, you know, that, that's something. Uh, as you might have expected, wiki commencement is coming out of a California law school. You'd get your ass kicked for suggesting something like that in the upper Midwest, <laughs> um, which, okay. Um, there was more snark in the article, but, you know, <laughs> I left it to this. Um, so the election, I ran against eight other people and it was extremely close. Uh, there were two runoff elections, but ultimately I did win. Uh, and I'll be honest, uh, even after the election, the wiki speech continued to be controversial. Um, it had been a close election, 
So a lot of the people hadn't voted for it. Um, but I was really surprised. Um, I thought the hard part would actually be writing the wiki speech. Um, but that part was actually extremely smooth. Um, the hard part was convincing people that this was worthwhile. And that was hard. Um, there was one particular day that was uh, particularly difficult. And uh, one of my professors who runs the Stanford Intellectual Property and Innovation Clinic uh, pulled me aside and he said, you know, Marta, uh, no one has ever really done something innovative and looked back and thought, oh, that was easy. <laughs> so I tried to keep that in, in mind. Um, and ultimately, indeed, the speech turned out really well. Um, the writing process went really smoothly. And ultimately, more than half of my classmates did participate. Um, and I really enjoyed the process of working with my classmates and reflecting on our three years together and writing something together that celebrated our time together. So you're probably wondering about the mechanics of writing the speech. Obviously, we can't just have a blank page and a free-for-all. We need structure. And of course, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. So we decided we would write the speech in three stages. And here are the stages. Um, stage one was topics, stage two, content, and stage three, editing. Uh, and I'm going to go through each stage and show you exactly how we did it. Um, but first, I'll show you what the wiki actually looked like. OK. Um, so a couple things to notice. Um, first, for Wikipedians here, uh, you're probably saying that's not media wiki. <laughs> Indeed, it is not. It is Wikispaces. Uh, why did I use Wikispaces instead of MediaWiki? Um, because I am a human and I make mistakes. <laughs> uh, but I do think that a project like this could be accomplished using a ton of different tools out there, even something as simple as a Google Doc, if it was structured the right way. Also, um, because we're in the Silicon Valley and URLs have to be adorable, uh, you might notice that there is a Swiss domain name uh, so it's wikispeed.ch. CH is the TLD for Switzerland. Um, the first stage that we actually had was um, we would brainstorm topics. And those topics would become buckets into which people could later contribute content. Uh, so these topics were things like jokes about law school, funny things about Stanford, stories about professors. Um, and so. We, we actually just kind of like sat around and brainstormed topics. A lot of the wiki speech was actually sitting around and, and doing things much like, much like we will be doing later today. Um, and throughout the entire writing process, um, the wiki was up and people could contribute online, but I really found this to be sort of the, the, the core of you know, the, the wiki speech um, experience. Um, and the events started out really small like this one. And by the end, in the weeks leading up to graduation, the events were much bigger, like 50 or 60 people. So that stage lasted a few weeks. Uh, and then we had these topics. And these were sort of like prompts. And so we wanted people at stage two to just give us everything they could think of that fit in that topic. All their funny stories about professors, all their ideas for jokes, all their heartwarming stories about classmates. Uh, so this is a stage two page. And so you can see like each topic had a heading. Uh, and when people would contribute their ideas and stories, they just put it like in bullet points. Um, and the point here was not that this is all going to go in the speech. The understanding was this is just going to be the pool from which we're going to pull at the next stage. So I just wanted as much content from as many people as I could possibly get. And more importantly, I wanted as many people as possible to participate. Um, and that's actually pretty challenging uh, because, as I read on Wikipedia, <laughs> um, as you all know, there's this 1990 rule for wikis um, that usually 90% of people just view content, 9% uh, of people edit content, and only 1% of people actually create new content. Um, and then there's also the Pareto principle, that 20% of the group will produce 80% of the activity. Um, but to me, it was really important to get as many people as possible involved. And I realized that not everyone is going to sign up for the wiki, and not everyone is going to come to a formal event. Um, so what I did was <laughs> cupcakes, the answer to everything. Um, 
as often as possible during stage two, uh, which lasted about six weeks, um, I would have these informal gatherings. And so I would just sit in the courtyard that everyone has to pass through, and I would have cupcakes and lemonade, and I would just invite people to come and grab a cupcake and chat. Um, and I would ask them, you know, do you have any ideas for stories? Do you have any heartwarming moments? You know, and I would just sit there and put them in the wiki myself. Um, and so that was something that was really successful. Um, this one, for example, I tried to do them on days that made sense. This one was our last first day, so it was the uh, first day of our last quarter. Um, and it was, we ended up having a huge amount of content to pull from uh, when we moved to stage three. Um, so then we moved into the editing phase. This one lasted about a month. Uh, the whole writing process all together was um, actually quite a while, about three or four months. Um, and to be fair, the editing process uh, kind of had subparts. Uh, so first, we sat down in person, and we had an edit-a-thon where we just looked at all the content we had, and we said, what themes do we see emerging? What should be the overarching theme of this speech? Um, and what we settled on was this theme, uh, you've made it. Um, so here are a few, um, I'll read these in a second. Um, here are a few um, uh, sort of excerpts from the speech. The way we started was, the speech was the way we started our law school experience, which was that um, in our first hour at Stanford Law School, a professor welcomed us with the words, you've made it. Um, and so we sort of took that to be our organizing theme. You know, what does it actually mean to say we've made it? Is the statement kind of actually problematic? Um, you know, why is it that we made it by getting to Stanford Law School? Um, and, and so we sort of circled back around at the end and, and came to, you know, we understand now that three years ago, we made it because we arrived at a place where excellence does not mean perfection, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that was our sort of organizing theme. We got that first, um, and that was how we, how we did that. So with this overarching theme in mind, we then filled in the in-between. So we created this kind of hodgepodge outline where we just copied and pasted stuff uh, over from our bullet pointed list over to the content bank, bank and tried to, uh, from the content bank, and tried to put it into a meaningful um, And then we sort of suggested ways to transition and organize it. Um, so we started with the You've Made It story, and then we talked about our experiences at Stanford Law and filled in stories. And then we talked about going to law school and learning about justice in the classroom at the same time as we saw all these injustices around us, um, and we talked about the things that we were able to do in law school to combat these injustices and what our law degrees would allow us to do in the future. Um, and so that was sort of our outline, and that really organically became a polishing process where we took the raw stories and ideas um, and suggested specific language from them and wrote and rewrote. Um, so this might look a little more familiar um, I, I saw something that said, um, every war that's ever been fought has been refought on Wikipedia. <laughs> um, so we did have discussions, of course, like, like any good wiki. Um, we, had, we had a discussion section. Um, so you can see up here, we've got sort of the, uh, the actual language of the speech. And um, anyone could go in and actually edit that, um, just move it around, you know, active version, delete things, add things, go back to previous versions. And, um, and you could also sort of highlight a section and say, um, you know, well, I don't really like this word. And, and the comments, you can see, they really range from like kind of really big topics, like have we made it, um, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, overarching organization things. And then they got down to like, I don't really like this word. Like, can we find a better word for this? Um, and so we had these discussions going on online, um, but we also had edit-a-thons where we would have these discussions in person. Um, and I would always um, compare the process to sandpaper. Uh, the more friction you apply, the smoother it gets, is what I would always say. Um, and, you know, of course the question that always comes up and has constantly been asked is, you know, when do you stop editing, right? Wikipedia doesn't just freeze one day, and that's, you know, the, the sum of the world's knowledge. Um, so how do you do that with a speech, where you actually have to deliver it at some point? And how do you prevent someone from coming in right before the deadline and deleting everything at the last second and replacing it with a different speech? 
Um, so the way I address that was to have an event that ended the editing process. So the last edit-a-thon. So we came into the event and did final tweaks and had final discussions. And during the event, I was the only one editing. So I was editing as we were discussing and when the event ended, um, that was the end of the group editing process. Um, one thing to note um, is that I, I did make little tweaks to it to make it a little more deliverable. Um, so there certainly is an element of top-down structure. You know, I, as I'm sure um, Wikimedia can attest to, uh, structure is important. <laughs> and um, so it's, uh, it definitely was not a free-for-all. Um, so the delivery method. Um, you can watch the speech on YouTube, um, of course. And um, my vision from the beginning was actually to make a video uh, with different classmates saying different parts of the speech. And it would have been great because we actually had an award-winning award filmmaker as one of our classmates. Uh, and he agreed to make the video, but unfortunately the law school would not let us have screens at the graduation. Um, so we had to look at other options. And it definitely could have been done any number of ways and would have been great. So for example, an audio recording would have worked, a celebrity delivering it, Jimmy Wales delivering it, um, <laughs> um, or one person delivering it. But ultimately, what we decided to do um, was a three-person delivery uh, where the other two classmates were chosen by lottery. And it worked out really well. Uh, it was really fun to have this kind of like back and forth dynamic um, and to sort of have an interactive speech giving um, experience. It kind of felt symbolic of the writing process. Um, so the speech is on YouTube and you can watch it. Um, I didn't want to take up too much of our time actually sitting and watching the video. Um, it felt kind of like meta, like I'm standing here and talking to you and then standing here and talking to you. Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, so, but you know, we can, I guess, kind of play like the first like minute just to sort of like, it really was a thing that happened and it really wasn't a disaster, I promise. Uh, so we'll play just like the first minute. At Stanford, Ooh, we're surrounded just, yeah. by a spirit of innovation that constantly mm. encourages us to ask. Yeah, that's just the audio. Uh, maybe they were right that the audio delivery wouldn't have been so great. <laughs> um, so I think ultimately uh, my takeaway from this um, was that uh, you don't, crowdsourcing doesn't need to be just something that uh, has objective facts at the end of it, right? Um, the sort of stereotypical version of why we should crowdsource things um, is the jelly beans in the jar example, right? Um, you can guess the number of jelly beans in the jar, but if you have 500 people guess the number of jelly beans in the jar, you know, you're go and you average that, you're going to get a much, much, much more accurate kind of picture. Um, uh, but I think, oh gosh. Oh, that's you. <laughs> okay. Um, let's put this back up. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so, but it, this was sort of an experiment. You know, how do you crowdsource something that's fundamentally creative? You know, there's this idea that create, creativity is like, you know, some author locking themselves away in, uh, you know, in, a, in a, an apartment in Paris and, uh, and you know, extracting something from the depths of their soul. Uh, that is this creative thing. Um, how do you do that? How do you do something creatively, um, collaboratively, and make it work? Um, and so this to me was something um, that I think was ultimately a success, or at least not as bad as you think. Um, <laughs> and um, so going forward as well, um, something I wanted to mention that may be of interest, uh, my current project, uh, since there are no more graduation speeches to deliver, uh, my current project is uh, working on a uh, crowdsourcing legislation type project, uh, which I will save for another time, um, but happy to chat with people individually later about that. Um, so with that, I really wanted to just uh, open it up. I'm pretty easy to, to find. Uh, my sincerest hope is that someone out there on the internet is watching this and uh, not to be meta, uh, <laughs> and uh, is going to, you know, maybe take this idea and, uh, and repeat it at their own school. Uh, and I'm happy to chat with anyone here or anyone on the internet about how to do that. And I'll open it up to discussion. And thank you all again so much for having me. Well, thanks very much for sharing with, that, with us. Uh, I'm hoping that we have some questions here. Brendan, do we have the, um, 
the, is there a microphone over here on the side like we've done in the past? Okay. So if you see Brendan in the back, if you want to ask a question, it's great if you can go up to the microphone. How did your wiki deal with edit conflicts? Um, yeah, so there were definitely a lot of edit uh, conflicts, right? There was, there, like, I, I say the sandpaper thing, and I emphasize the friction. <laughs> like, there really was a lot of, you know, it, it's, it's friction, you know, as applied to the speech itself, not between each other. Um, I think also that, I think the collegiality aspect really helped. Um, I think the fact that we all knew each other already, um, was really great because we all could sort of like actually sit down and have a discussion about, you know, what do we what do we think about this line? Um, and I'll be honest, I think the um, I think I think one you know criticism of this kind of creativity that you could say is that it does become a little bit watered down, um, in that you know you you sort of have to you do kind of have to appease everyone, right? We we had to have a thanking the parents section, you know, because it was very important to many people that we thank the parents, even though it's sort of you know the standard. Um, and um, so, you know, that was, it, it, but I think. Uh, I remember your mom's watching. My mom is watching. Thank you, mom, <laughs> for everything you did uh, to get me there. That's from all of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we tried to like add in the like, uh, we tried to like do the, we made it spin, like thank you for everyone help, who helped us make it, or so, you know, we tried to do something. But, um, but there are definitely editing conflicts and um, I think the collegiality is, is really what saved it. People try and tell you like how you should speak, like how you should move around the stage or theatrics to do or anything like that. And uh, if so, how did they organize that kind of thing? Um, so much, uh, <laughs> so much. Uh, yes, there were a lot of there were a lot of um, opinions on on how to deliver it. Um, and like honestly, the delivery could have gone a million different ways. Um, some of the ideas, I mean, all, all the ideas were actually like. You know, pretty good. Like at one point, we played with the idea of like, what if the, you know, like I mean, this is definitely like when you're in like a deep discussion. You're like, what if we held up emojis? And then like this was like this, right? And like at the time, it seemed like a great idea, and we like actually talked about it um, for a while, and then didn't end up going with that. Um, <laughs> um, but um, but no. And the other thing was writing the speech collaboratively. Um, we were funny. There were funny moments. You can you can watch it later. Um, there was there's one joke where we're listing out all these legal words that we like really just you know got lost in, um, and then um, at one point we like list out like Wingardium Leviosa, and then someone goes that's from Harry Potter, and like it's like this little like aside, and it was really funny and it landed on the day of, um, but like half the class was like that's stupid, <laughs> like that is a terrible idea, like that is not funny at all. Um, so it's also it's also sort of like a matter of balancing people's um, people's tastes. That one made it in. Other other ones um, other ones didn't. So humor was a humor was a, it, humor was hard yeah humor was hard. Um, uh, in my original um, in my original speech, um, I, like not original speech in my um, like in one of my edits, uh, I had put in uh, like a joke about how law school was bonding through mutual trauma, you know, which I thought was hilarious. But um, but like people were like, that's not funny. Trauma isn't funny, and it and it isn't. <laughs> And it isn't, um, and so, and they were right, and I'm glad, and so this is the watered down thing, right? I'm I am glad they took that out, so, yeah. <laughs> We've solved the humor thing, I think, on Wikipedia. If you ever, just don't. Just don't, just don't, just don't be funny. Don't. Just don't be funny. I know, I just, I like, I really, I think this was mostly me pushing it. I really wanted it to be funny because my feeling on graduation speeches is like, you're sitting there, it's hot, and like, like you don't care about you know the other 500 people, like you being like an audience member, not a you know a member of the class, and like, it's just kind of really painful. And so my whole thing about the student graduation speaker is like, your job is to be funny. Like your job is to make this less painful for everyone sitting out there in the audience. Um, and so like my undergrad speech, just jokes. I mean the whole thing. Like there was nothing serious about it. Um, in this in this one we did get pretty serious. It, it sort of started out funny um, because I made, you know, I like forced them to, to, <laughs> to make it start out funny. Um, but no, we did end up like talking about really serious topics. 
Um, so for example, we, we talked about what it was like to be like sitting in the classroom and like talking about um, you know, justice and like criminal justice. And then to sort of like look out, you know, look at the newspapers, you know, on the same day and see the things that are happening in the criminal justice system and, you know, um, people not being indicted and you know, lots of things that were going on at the same time. And so um, one thing that was actually really cool was being able to have these really serious conversations like among ourselves as we were editing. Like, how, what do we think of this and how can we say something meaningful about this? Um, and so on the, on the serious side, it was actually very, it, it turned out to be, um, I think, a really good thing that we were, when we got serious. So, so I have a question. Um, so I've, I've done a fair amount of work here at the foundation and separately in, um, in persuading professors and teachers that, that Wikipedia or wikis in general have an important role in the educational world and that there's a lot that can be learned from engaging on a wiki and from engaging with people who maybe aren't you know, in your class, et cetera. So I'm curious, like, was there, what, were, were there any faculty members or administrators who kind of took an interest in what you were doing who might have been inspired to try something different in their classes? Ooh, I wish. That would be great. I mean, that was sort of my hope, right, is to, you know, we're already in the Silicon Valley and um, collaboration is all around us. And I really wanted to, you know, sort of bring technology to the, you know, hundreds of years old tradition that is graduation ceremonies and tired and stale graduation ceremonies. Um, and I think bringing wikis into the, I mean, not entirely, but you know, tired and stale old methods of teaching, you know, is another great example of like how you can use wikis. I, I wish that professors um, had sort of been more involved. Um, I did have professors come up to me after the speech and say, this was so great, so maybe they were inspired. Um, my favorite moment, if, if you watch the speech, at one point um, a, a professor uh, takes out his phone and he's sitting on the stage behind me and like, kind of looks like he's like taking a selfie, like, and I'm like behind him, and it's great, it's great. So like, watch for that that Easter egg. So maybe he was inspired uh, by the by the nature of the wiki. We'll go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. Right. Anyone else? And if you could maybe introduce yourself, and if you'd like to say a couple words about what you do, I think that might. I'm, I'm sure people are curious. Uh, long time Wikimedian there former board member, and now I'm a lawyer, because I actually work with Sparta outside of uh, wikis. But I I'm wondering what the best thing that ended up in the speech is that you would never in a million years have put in if it was just you. That's such a good question. Um, so one of the parts of the speech I really liked um, is we sort of start listing off the things that we did in at law school that kind of were aimed at combating some of the injustices that we saw in the world. Um, you know, Stanford has a lot of really amazing uh, programs that allow us to like clinically, you know, work in clinic and do things. And um, as we were sitting around um, talking about what we should list, people were saying, oh, what about this, what about that? And I'm like, I didn't know we had that at Stanford. Like, that's amazing. You did what? Like, um, so that was really cool. Like, I mean, I really do think that a big part of it was the process of like sitting there with people and talking about their experiences and what they, um, what they did. So that was, that was really cool. And I was really glad that we were able to list things that I didn't even know were at Stanford. Oh, we do. Please. Hi, uh, I'm Charles Rostloff. I'm a lawyer here at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, what was it like delivering the speech when you knew probably at least half your classmates had already read it? Like, did you did it feel like you were delivering it to them or more to the people who weren't your classmates who were there? How did that like affect what, how you thought about it? Yeah, no, that's such a great question because you know that was definitely a consideration, or that was something I heard people talk about, like. Well, isn't the speech also, you know, for us? Um, and, and I guess in, on this, I sort of felt like I would rather that we participate in this process for months um, and sort of have have that experience together collectively than, you know, just collectively sitting and, and listening to a speech. Um, but um, actually, 
um, the class, my classmates, I think, reacted a lot more um, than I than I thought they would. Right? Like, of course, like with jokes, you'd think they wouldn't laugh, but they totally laughed. Um, and um, I guess like a social proof thing, other people were laughing, so they felt like they should laugh. But um, but like, there's a moment in the speech in the beginning where um, so I sort of stand up there and I say like. Here's what we did, here's how we did this, here's what the process was like. Um, and then the other two classmates come on and, and, we, and we sort of say, okay, and the result is this speech. And the classmates went like crazy. Like they were, and it was just like completely spontaneous. We did not plan to stop for applause, but they just went nuts, like, you know, clapping, applauding about like, yeah, this is our speech and we wrote this together. And um, so they, I actually think they reacted kind of more. Uh, hi, my name is Maria and I work for uh, Wikimedia Foundation Community Engagement Department. And I'm from Argentina, so this is where I'm coming from f with my question. Um, I, I realize um, speeches, you know, uh, legally blonde. Uh, so I, I realize speeches are a tradition here in the US for graduation ceremony. Um, so my question is, um, is there any uh, political view um, or intention to control it from the authorities of the university and um, how does that work when you say I'm just gonna crowdsource the speech uh, was there any um, intention to um, control that or, or monitor it or uh, censor it uh, it's a fantastic question um, uh, so uh, the Stanford was in incredibly supportive of, of the wiki speech. Like the law school was incredibly supportive and I really, um, I was really grateful to them. Um, and um, th actually there was less than I thought there would be. Uh, I'll be honest, I thought they would ask me for a, pa you know, the, the, the wiki is closed. You can only sort of participate if you have a password. And I really thought they would ask me for a password, you know, and I, I tried to, I tried to do, yeah, I tried to do things, you know, as openly as possible. Um, you know, I went to the then dean with my idea and she thought it was a great idea. She, you know, she allowed me to, you know, run in the election on that platform. And, um, and so she was, you know, really great. And, um, and I, yeah, I was actually really surprised. There was not a lot of, um, there was not a lot of attempts to control it um, from, from the top. And um, I, I appreciated the, the freedom. Um, to do that, but um, I mean, I think this is something I think about a lot. I know we're not talking about crowdsourcing legislation, but like this is the thing I think about a lot, right? This is a like we're luckily like in a place that uh, is you know in the U.S. where you know you can say things that are you know in a non-anonymous fashion, and um, and and not have to worry about government repercussions of that. Um, and so as a result, you can have sort of you know. N like non-anonymous ways of, of collaborating and in so doing you avoid sort of the, the Twitter troll problem. Um, but you know in other places doing something like um, like a, uh, a crowdsourced legislation kind of thing, you really, you really can't, you know, you have to be anonymous. You absolutely have to be anonymous because there's, you know, the government repercussions. So definitely something I think about. Yeah, and a great question. Okay, well, Let's have a round of applause for Marta. We've still got a bit of time to hang out and some more snacks and drinks in the back. So if you have more questions that come up, I'm sure Marta will be here for a little while to answer them. Um, and I also, uh, we have one further announcement uh, before we break here. And actually this reminds me, I want, in, in the, the earlier intro, I really wanted to acknowledge the Wikimedia Foundation um, for not just providing the space for, uh, for I guess, four out of our five so far of these events, which is a fantastic space, and also the, the staff who have really actively helped us. So Stephen is going to make an announcement in a moment. Stephen Laporte over here. Uh, Brendan in the back. I'm sorry, Brendan Campbell. There's a hyphenated in there, isn't it? Campbell Craven. Brendan Campbell Craven has been our stalwart AV person. Uh, Juliet Barbara. Uh, who asked a question earlier, has been helping in getting the, the facilities set up. So uh, Wayne and Ben and I basically put it the bill for, uh, for getting some refreshments in the first few months, but the Wikimedia Foundation also through a grant has now funded that stuff for, uh, I believe, the, the next year. So uh, if we could just have a round of applause for the foundation for supporting this.
I think Stephen has a, a announcement or an event for us. Yeah, so this is unrelated to uh, my role at the foundation. I'm Stephen Laporte. I sort of a big fan of these events. Um, if you look behind you, there's a there's a photo on the back wall back there um, above that couch of a monument that was taken last year. Um, this photo was one of the top three from a Wiki Loves Monuments campaign, uh, which is an international competition to photograph all the historical sites around the world. Um, it's primarily run in Europe, but for very exciting news today, we have someone organizing a campaign in California this year. Um, I think there was one in California last year, but this is really not a big thing here. Um, there's not a lot of uh, photographs of these, these monuments. We have a long list of things on a page on Wikimedia Commons. Um, and if you're at all interested in taking photographs and submitting them to the competition or uh, helping the volunteer who's running this organize the competition and recruit more photographers and the jury to select the winning photos, come talk to me afterwards and I'll introduce you. Um, but I think it could be a lot of fun. It, the competition will run for the entirety of September. So starting se September 1st, you can take pictures of monuments in our beautiful state, upload them to Commons under a special tag, and then um, hopefully be one of the, the best monument photographs at the end of the year. So come talk to me afterwards if that sounds interesting to you, because um, I think us in the, the Bay Area could do a good job of like making this a, a good campaign and demonstrate it for other states, maybe get more photographs and Vicky Loves Monuments in the US. Okay, and one other, this reminds me, uh, there is another important California-based event that's coming up in, uh, in October, which is the Wiki Conference USA. So this is, uh, I think, is becoming an annual event, but this is the first time it's going to be on the West Coast. Sorry? I'm sorry, Wiki, Wiki Conference North America, not just USA. We haven't built that wall yet. But I did <laughs> scratch that, scratch that. Um, so, uh, so this is going to be in San Diego. There is a, um, there the I believe the deadline for submissions to do a presentation is today, and I'm not sure. Maybe that's passed now. Maybe you could squeeze something in under the deadline, like this evening. Uh, but the the uh, applications to join, I think, are still open. I'm not sure exactly when the deadline is, but I think there's still time to get involved. I, and I believe that's the seventh through tenth of October in San Diego. Yeah, I'm getting some nods. Any other announcements? Anyone wants to share? Okay, well let's uh, let's call it and get back to the food and drink. Oh. Last Wednesday of the month here for for the Wiki Salon every month. So come back. <laughs>